Welcome to Watch Guard's Daily Security Bite. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today, I remember Adrian Lamo. Today's Daily Bite is a little different in that I'm going to use it to memorialize a well-known gray hat hacker that unfortunately has passed away. Over the weekend, I learned that Adrian Lamo, a well-known gray hat hacker, passed away in his apartment in Wichita, Kansas for undisclosed reasons so far, but it doesn't look like foul play. Unfortunately, Adrian Lamo was only 37 years old. Now, if you haven't heard of Adrian Lamo, he was an infamous and well-known hacker who actually uh, grew to fame early in my career as a network security analyst here at WatchGuard. He's most known for, in 2002, hacking the New York Times. And he was often called the homeless hacker because at the time, he didn't have a place of residence. He would hang out on friends' couches or just live wherever he could. But during the daytime, he would find open Wi-Fi access points and use an old laptop to find security vulnerabilities in well-known organizations. In the New York Times hack, he was able to infiltrate the New York Times network and actually gain access to LexisNexis, which is one of their uh, very expensive research uh, products that they use to research various things. Now, what's strange about Adrian is he was never a black hat hacker. He didn't do this to actually hijack companies and steal anything. Rather, after he would hack them, he would then go to the company and tell them their vulnerabilities, and he wouldn't charge them. In fact, he wouldn't take any sort of money for finding these vulnerabilities, but he did tend to make them public by going to the press after. Now, he was known as a gray hat hacker because while I don't think he had any real foul play in mind, I did never love his techniques. Penetration testing any organization without first getting express permission is technically illegal. So what Adrian Lamo did was illegal. And he ended up actually fighting the New York Times in court and actually having to pay some sort of price for doing those type of hacks. But over the years, he would continue to do things like that. He had hacked into AOL, Yahoo, Microsoft, a number of well-known companies out there. But again, he didn't sell these hacks. He didn't do anything bad. He would simply tell the organization about their vulnerabilities so that they could fix them. And really, at his core, he seemed to be a white hat hacker, probably going about it the wrong way. To add to his infamy, Adrian Lama was also known as the guy that outed Chelsea Manning and his leaks to the FBI. Back when Chelsea Manning, then known as Bradley Manning, was doing all his leaks, he contacted Adrian Lamo and actually let him know about it, presumably because he heard about Adrian and his gray hat hacking ways through the press. In any case, he chatted with Adrian Lamo about these hacks, and the result was Adrian didn't love them and actually contacted the FBI about Bradley Manning. His argument was that while Manning might feel like he has good motives, he's actually leaking a lot of information that could be top secret without actually validating if it's going to hurt anyone in the US military. Now, I have no judgment here. I actually think what Chelsea Manning was doing was quite bad. Uh, while you might argue that some of those leaks were good for the public to know, it seems like Chelsea grabbed big swaths of data without actually validating what he had, and he leaked it all, which is very dangerous when you have that sort of top secret information. And it's one of the differences I personally have between Chelsea Manning or Edward Snowden, who at least validated some of the information he shared before deciding to do so. In either case, that's not the point. Besides actually being a gray hat hacker that found vulnerabilities in a lot of sites, Lema was also known for uh, telling the FBI about Chelsea Manning. In any case, I was very saddened to hear about this news. I don't actually know Adrian Lamo in any personal fashion, but he actually made an impact on my own security beliefs. You know, he was one of the hackers I followed early on in my security career. And while I didn't always agree with some of his ends, I ultimately thought he actually wanted to improve people's security and thought he was a good guy that used bad techniques. So anyways, I just wanted to memorialize him a little. And if you don't know about him, read about him. He's a very interesting personality. In fact, Brian Krebs of Krebs on Security put up a great article talking about him. And Krebs actually knew him quite early on when he first started his hacking. Of course, my condolences go out to his friends and of course his family, like his father who found out about this and actually posted on 2600's Facebook group. Anyways, it's a sad day to hear that he has passed, but he's definitely had an impact on our industry, ultimately for the good. That's it for today's news. Thank you for watching.